My husband Dennis and I built this house. He's a surveyor and had always wanted to build his own house. Um, and he loves Dorset, so he found this plot in between a pub and some rare breed pigs. A friend of mine rang me and said, there's an auction coming up, a uh, bit of land you might be interested in. Came down the morning of the auction, looked at the land, thought it was ideal, bid for it that afternoon, and luckily enough, got it. The plot had the remnants of an old post office on it, and the footings that the previous owners had put in to keep their planning permission. So we could see it had planning permission. We changed the planning on it and went for the local vernacular, which is stone and uh, red brick, thinking that would sail through. The planners said, no, we want something modern. Which was fantastic because Dennis then knew he could fulfill his ambition of building a passive house. So thanks to the planners, we were able to, to build passive. I'd always been interested in passive houses put the planning in, apart from one minor change, sail through, and uh, the rest is history, as they say. We didn't want anything too big, and we didn't want anything with a massive garden. Sort of downsizing is something that we can keep for quite a number of years without having to move. And it was ideal for that, a pub next door, post office opposite. Dennis had worked previously with a certified passive house designer called Paul Mallion from Conquer Conservation. We wanted a house that was light filled, Paul was the designer, but Dennis had an input as well. I always had the idea that it would be timber framed. I knew I wanted big windows. I sort of knew the layout. It was for him to just come up with how we can do it, really. The outline of the building, the rectangular shape, was sort of set in stone. We, we egged that slightly with a lean-to to the ground floor to give us some more room kitchen downstairs with bedrooms downstairs, lounges on the first floor which gives us lovely views. Every window has a little picture of the countryside around us, that's been a real bonus. You need to build a good rapport with your architect, he's the most important guy in the whole thing. I think the actual site had a few issues. On the north facing side there's a, a little hill which starts off on agricultural land and you get water running down the hill. Our neighbour keeps some rare breed pigs, so it goes through the pig pens and then it was coming all the way through our site. The site got flooded a few times, but our neighbour, who, who's the farmer next door, suggested that we put in a sort of drain coming right through the property under the decking with a sump in his field and that takes the overrun normally and it's proved perfect. We haven't had any problems since. The biggest problem was that the timber frame company went bust on us and that stopped the building, uh, cost us money. In the end, we had to struggle to pay for the kitchen because it came out of my wife's kitchen fund, which she was not happy about. And, um, but we got there in the end, but that did cause a big problem because obviously you've then got to make other arrangements and the whole building site comes to a halt. I wasn't here to supervise it, so I, I have a friend who's a builder, he was very good, but it's, there's nothing like being here to make decisions and make sure everything carries on. In hindsight, if I ever did another one, I'd make sure I was on site. But having said that, I'd need to earn money to pay for it. I had to order all the materials and decide on the window company, all the specialist companies. So I was dealing with all them and then obviously day-to-day -day stuff my builder was dealing with. We came down pretty much every weekend to see what was going on. So we were down regularly but you still need to be here a lot more than I was really. So I was lucky that I had a good builder. Even if you've got a builder on a full price and he's taking care of everything, you still need to be on site regularly to, to look, at, look at the works. And if you don't know anything about building, luckily I'm a conservator, I do know about building, so I can look at works and see that they're being done well. If you can't and you need an architect or a surveyor to work on your behalf, and it, it really suggests if you don't know anything about building and you're not really interested, you, you must go that route otherwise you'll get into loads of problems. I've learned that you've got 
to be on it all the time. If you want to keep your time scales, you've just got to be on it 24-7. You can't let a day slip. And, and also when time slips, money slips as well. It, it's a combination. So to get the most out of your money, you, you really need to do, to do a lot of work to, to get people going. You can't have people slipping away, you know, losing days. It just doesn't work like that. And you have to get everything on site as you need it. But you can't, you can't help things going wrong. You know, things will go wrong and you've just got to combat them as they come up. The finance side, uh, we had a, a mortgage from the Ecological Building Society who were very helpful. We got the money as we built in stages. Uh, that worked very well. You've just got to budget it and, uh, and you need a bit more than your budget to be safe. You know, there's nothing worse than thinking you're running out of money and you won't be able to finish it and it's, that brings loads and loads of pressure. Having been through the self-build journey, um, something I never anticipated I would, I would thoroughly recommend it to anyone who is in a position um, to maybe think about doing so. There are pitfalls, there will be things that go wrong. You have to have uh, grit and determination, I think, to follow things through. But go for it, that's what I'd say to anyone. If you can, it's, it's well worth the journey. It's good fun, especially when you finish and we're very happy with the house and it's worth the effort, you know, 10 times over. Although it's not part of the passive house build, we've got solar thermal and PV, so we get hot water. Our bills are like between 10 and 20 pounds a month electricity, and then we get money back every quarter. So the house doesn't cost a penny to run. So it's brilliant. The money saving side of it, you know, can't be underestimated. Dennis sings long, and hard in the shower when he's having a hot shower with his free hot water. We'll be, we'll be getting some more from the bit of sunshine today. So, yeah, I think, you know, future planning as, as we're a little bit older, you know, and, and saving ourselves some money in the future. Living in the passive house is, is really, really good. It's just comfortable, it's airy, it's light. It's absolutely fantastic to live in a passive house. That's been the great bonus that I never truly anticipated until you're actually living in one, uh, you don't appreciate the air quality. I just think you get a really lovely sense of well-being in a passive house.